Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It is me, Zaza here, and we are doing another history, mystery, and makeup today. And today we're going to be talking about the Pendle witch trials. So, let's get into it. Right, so let's get into this makeup. Start with priming my face. So today we're going to be discussing the Pendle witches. Um, this was one of the most notorious witch trials of the 17th century. Some of you may have heard of the Pendle Witches. It's a group of witches that seem to be kind of all over um, in terms of like movies, TV shows, that kind of thing, books. Um, they're often referred to um, in entertainment and so on. They were the most notorious uh, witches that the UK has known. So 11 women were put to trial, six of whom came from two different families in the area. The Demdikes, which was headed by Elizabeth uh, Southerns, and then there was the Chattox family, and they was headed by Anne Whittle. They were both, both women were in their 80s, so you know, they was quite old. No disrespect, but they was quite old. Um, the families were notorious in the area and were very much well known. So the Demdikes, which was Elizabeth's family, she had a daughter and her name was Elizabeth Device. And Elizabeth Device, had two children, so Elizabeth Southern's grandchildren, and they were uh, James and Alison Device. The Chattox family was headed, like I said, by Anne Whittle, and her daughter was Anne Redfern, Redfern I believe it is. So the other <clears throat> people that actually were trialed were Jane Bullcock, uh, Alice Nutter, Catherine Hewitt, John Bullcock, and Alice Alice Gray and Janet Preston. So they were the eleven, including the Chattox and the Demdike family, that were put to trial. Back in the sixteenth century, healers and people that dealt with uh, medicines and herbs were normal part of village life like you went to see one of these people if you had ailments so it was quite normal the Demdike family um, especially old Demdike so that's what they called Elizabeth uh, Southerns she was actually known to be a witch in the village for over 50 years so she was a known well she was known witch to to the villagers they believed she was a witch and they believed that for 50 years like she was deep rooted in the community they knew who she was and they knew she was a witch back then people were able to um, make a living out of being known as a, a witch or posing as a witch because obviously people would come to them for whatever issues they had and obtain their services so it was quite a lucrative business to be known as a witch and there was many people who was really interested like really interested in witchcraft and witches and one of them was actually King James the first King James actually wrote a book called the Daemonology. In this book he suggested that practitioners and supporters of witchcraft 
should be condemned and prosecuted. He didn't believe that it was a good thing to be a witch, he didn't think it was a positive thing. Um, he thought that they should face prosecution for acting as a witch. Sometimes when I read these kind of things that have actually happened, I'm just like, it's crazy. Like, you don't actually, it's like, you hear that it's from our history, or the history of the UK, but you're like, this actually happened. Like, it's kind of, it's mad. It's mad that these things actually happen. You know, it's easy to read something and kind of disassociate yourself or, you know, yeah, disassociate yourself from the things that actually happened in our history. So because of King James's book um, and his views on witchcraft, he actually made it so that all the justice of peace in Lancaster had to make a list of all the people in their towns and villages that didn't attend church. As you know at the time, <clears throat> Catholicism, Christian and being Christian was the norm. So if you didn't attend church, they probably thought something was wrong with you. Back in 1612, Lancashire was just seen as a lawless as a lawless city, lawless town, um, where they believed that it was just run by thieves um, and violence and sexual laxity. It was deemed that although the church was honoured in the community and, to, and so on, common people didn't understand the doctrines, they didn't really understand what it was to be Christian and part of the church. So basically, if you was from Lancaster, they didn't view you very highly back then in 1612. I'm sure things have changed now. I think Lancaster's quite a... Um, I think a lot of people visit Lancaster. It's, it's got quite a high tourism. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe so. So let's get down to what actually happened. Why are we talking about Lancaster. So it actually stemmed from Alison Device, which was the granddaughter of Elizabeth Southerns, the Demdikes. She was on the road one day and saw a gentleman called John Law selling goods. He was a peddler, which means that they sold, they sell small goods. They travel around from place to place selling goods. So she saw him and she asked him for some of his goods. She actually wanted some pins and John Law refused to give her these pins. He just out and out refused. Because he refused, Alison, being the, the witch that she was, from the family of witches she was supposed to have been from, cursed John. Um, she cursed him and what he actually later on died from a stroke, which is sad, you know, bad timing, you know, wouldn't want to be running down that road, bumping into a witch. Before John Law passed, he actually blamed Alison, um, saying that it was due to her witchcraft in, witchcraft in powers why he became ill and therefore passed away. The event was brought to Justice, uh, what was his name? Justice Noel and Alison just confessed. She just confessed to it all. She said that she asked the devil to lame John Law um, and laming is, to, is someone that doesn't walk well. So she wanted to mess up his legs basically to make it difficult for him to walk. But then something strange happened. Alison decided she was just gonna start blabbering her mouth. She decided to tell Justice Noel that the Chattox family, so the grandmother, old mother Chattox, was a witch and that she done witchcraft also. <laughs> she was like, listen, our families don't get on. So basically the Chattox, the Chattox and the Demdrake family, they didn't get on. So she was like, I'm just gonna 
bring her down with me. So a lot of people thought that she told about the Chatters family just to get revenge basically on the family. So why did the Chattox family and the Demdikes have this rivalry? Well, basically, the feud began when a member of the Chattox family broke into the Demdikes home, which is Morgan Tower. And, you know, for those of you who are into like fantasy stuff, you would have heard of Morgan Tower at some point. So apparently, the member of the Chattox family that broke into the home, the Malkin Tower, apparently stole goods worth one pound, which in our day would be roughly about a hundred pound worth of goods. Which may not seem a lot, but that's their stuff. So, Alison Device's father actually also claimed that the Chattox family had threatened him and he believed that they were the cause of his eventual death. They caused for him to get sick because they had offered him protection. They, well, offered, being a nice word. Um, they threatened that if he didn't, or the family didn't pay them for their protection, things would happen to them. He believes that they are the cause of his illness and his later death. But what in just happened after that just seems to be insane. So both families just began going on this blaming and accusation rant, just exposing both families for apparent deeds that they had done. The Chattox family actually ended up being tried for four local deaths that had happened in the village. And even and even Dames Dem Demdike De keeps getting this name wrong. Demdike, <laughs> Demdike, um, actually accused his sister of cursing a local child, and it got so crazy that James and Alison's mum Elizabeth actually accused her own mother Elizabeth Southerns of having the mark of the devil on her body from where the devil had sucked her blood. I, I would say that in funny face but it's really not funny, it's, it's mad. Um, but basically she snitched up her mother. Can you imagine? You think you're gonna go down so you start snitching on your own family. It's incredible! The both old mother Chattox and old mother Demdike actually confessed that they had sold their souls to the devil. That's insane! Like they're confessing a lot. Like especially think about the times. This is back where things were not as lax as they are in terms of. You know, you can say you're a witch now, and there's nothing. People just be like, yeah, whatever. Do you know what I mean? Back then, that's death. Do you know what I mean? And they actually admitted to a lot of stuff. So yeah, they said that they sold their souls. So following the evidence heard, both, so Alison, Old Demdike, so that's Elizabeth Southerns, Old Chattox, and Anne were then uh, detained and uh, by the judge following all this evidence that had come up and obviously all their confessions. Now this is where it gets a bit weird. So basically the number of people that were set to go to trial was the ones I just listed. However, an incident happened, as usual always, an incident is occurring to make things worse. Uh, James De Device, the uh, Demdike's grandson, stole a sheep. He stole a sheep and they decided to have a meeting in Malkin Tower. Those that were sympathetic to the family um, attended this meeting and then the word got back to the judge and eight other people ended up summoned for questioning and then trial. 
All because of a sheep. A sheep. Uh, whether this was fortunate or unfortunate, uh, I'll let you decide. But old, old mother Demdike did not reach reach trial. She actually ended up dying in the cell in her cell. Um, she was pretty old. There was both, you know, her and old Chattox were both in this. 80s so the conditions of the cell just meant that it would have been hard for them to survive regardless like it was damp it was dreary there was you know it's dark it's it's miserable in themselves especially back then it's not like now you know people cuss and insult prisons now can you imagine back then oh i know which i'd prefer no not saying i never want to go to prison but i know which one i'd prefer to be in Definitely now, most definitely, but I, I digress. Old mother Dem Demdike ended up passing away in her cell. All of those accused and set to go to trial were actually locked up in Lancashire prison. And the trials took place on from the 17th to the 19th of August in 1612. So, what is crazy about this trial is that back then there was an age limit, sorry, an age limit on who could provide evidence to, to a trial. However, when it came to which trials, this was not the case, anyone of any age could give evidence and so that's what happened Jeanette Device yes you heard it Device the same surname yes she actually was nine years old and she was made to give evidence against the families and quite significant amount of evidence as well so she actually gave evidence regarding the meeting that was held in Malkin Tower who, who attended um, and also, obviously, she gave evidence against her mother, her brother and her sister. So when she was given evidence against her mother and her family, her mother kicked off. Kicked off, you can imagine. Going, screaming, going crazy. And she ended up cursing her daughter like... She cursed her own daughter. But then how are you giving evidence against... Well, she probably didn't have a choice. She probably was made to give evidence against her family. But, you know, imagine. You cursed your own daughter. <laughs> Crazy. So the only one that actually had to face their victim was Alison Device. You remember John Law? She actually had to face him in court. Well, when she was on trial, she had to face him. And she actually just broke down on her knees and confessed crying. She just confessed everything in tears. I just, when I heard that, I was like, why Why are you in tears? You were brazen enough to curse him. Do you know what I mean? Why, why are you in tears now? It's a bit late now. But I guess because she probably saw how bad he was, how bad he looked and his, how bad his health was, that it made her feel bad. Probably made her feel guilty. That's why she was in tears. Assumption. Assumption. This trial was actually the most notorious because, you know, both families were in this competition to be, you know, to have this crazy reputation in the area. Um, and many people feared witchcraft. So, you know, to have so many of them and to be confessing to all these curses and you know, everything that they've done to people around in the villages and the area, people were so scared. So across the UK, this was like the biggest witch trial that, that they'd seen. It was unusual for this amount of people um, to be put to trial in this way. It was, it was insane at the time. So to this day, Pendle in Lancashire is still a tourist area is a tourist magnet you know people flock down there 
uh, to see the witch motifs that are sold in the shops. Um, there's pen. There's even a Pendle Witch Brew, which is a beer that they sell locally uh, in the pubs, I believe. And they actually host a gathering on Pendle Hill on Halloween every year. Um, I was going to say, it might not happen this year, unless it's under six people. But yeah, they do it every year, every Halloween. They have a gathering. I wonder what they do. I don't know if it's a gathering of witches or just people that are interested in it. Maybe they just talk about how they lived and stuff. Not sure. I can't lie, I want to go to Pendle and see for myself. On the 400th anniversary of the Pendle Witch Trials, they actually marked Pendle Hill with the date 1612, which was obviously the date of the trial and their hangings, I guess. But basically what they did was they engraved it into the grass on the hill. Massive. It just said 1612. I'll put it on the screen for you to see. But I think that... I don't know if I could say they're proud of their history. Just It's just that that history is there. You know, that's somewhere where they had confessed witches living in the area. So there are a lot of movies, uh, TV shows, books, plays surround, um, made about the Pendle Witches. Um, I even have read a series of books about Pendle Witches. Yeah, kind of about Pendle Witches. Um, it's called The Spooks series, written by Joseph Delaney. I absolutely love those books. They're like... Uh, late teen, uh, young adult style of writing books. They're quite scary, um, they're quite intense, very descriptive, very funny, um, which doesn't go along with what I just said, but if you read them or if you're <laughs> gonna read them, they are brilliant books. Joseph Delaney captures not only the scenery, but the event so well in his writing, it's, it's brilliant. So if you are interested, um, then Joseph Delaney, The Spooks, is an amazing series to read and he has so many in the series, so many books, so yeah. The series of books is actually loosely, not even loosely, it's quite um, written around all of the myths um, that the area has had over centuries. You know um, all the different monsters ghosts and ghasts and such witches and and so on so witchcraft is not something new it isn't something that you know there's just little secret whispers in the corner or myths hanging around this is something that is worldwide spread you know um you determine whether you believe in witchcraft or not you believe in curses and evil just evil that's that's something that you have to determine for yourself um i don't know where i land but when you really look into history witchcraft was never necessarily a bad thing it's been portrayed that way through media and film and so on over the generations because the root of witchcraft so they call it was the medicine person, you know, the medicine woman, you know, she used herbs and for healing. So I think although these these witches who claim these women who claim to be witches were evil, chose to be evil, there's good and bad in everything in this world, yin and yang is supposed to be that way, so you determine how you feel about the Pendle Witches um, and how much they just chose to dub each other in. 
including their own families that's the one bit i couldn't understand why would you dub your own family in but it just shows that they maybe truly were evil that they didn't even care that they was basically killing off their own family members by accusing them of witchcraft but that was the pendle witches the most notorious witch trial of the uk throughout history tell me what you thought of it right so if you are new to my channel then thank you for watching and getting this far the watching the whole video do go ahead and press that subscribe button down below if you really enjoyed this uh don't forget to give it a big thumbs up to all my oldies but goldies thank you for coming back to the channel and watching this video and yeah i'll see you in the next one guys bye Oh, come on! This is flipping ridiculous. The Malkin Tower. Oh my god, people! So, following the ever so ever there, I put a spell on you. Now you're mine.